Ah, sí. Está full. Mm. Ya fue entonces, ¿no? Y voy a tratar de ilustrar cómo la education from 
the original campus and have it to be a more global education. There are some, I think, useful definitions of internationalization that you could consider and think about. And one of those says that internationalization should be a process aiming at integration of international, intercultural and global perspectives in the purpose of organization of delivery of all university education. So this then includes internationalization at home. And UNESCO, the United Nations Organ for uh, Education and Research, has stated that universities should, as their most important responsibility, contribute to a sustainable global development, including the best possible development of health in the world. So the reason why it's important to think about standards and think about harmonization of education and to think about um, mobility of healthcare personnel is the fact that there is such a mobility, both of patients but also of students and doctors. Actually doctors in a global perspective is that profession group that has the most, the largest likelihood of spending some time of that professional career abroad. But as long as that flow is unilateral and only goes from the poorer countries to the richer countries, we have a problem. That problem is political, it's financial, it's driven by the fact that doctors want to fulfill their professional desires, they want to be able to develop themselves professionally as much as possible. And if they can't see that those possibilities are available at your home country, you will look to go somewhere else. What education can do to contribute, to change this perspective is maybe not so much, but, but I think some issues are important. One is that we can change, and we can do that in the guidelines and in the standard setting, the ideal picture of what is a doctor. From only thinking of a doctor as the most highly specialized person at the tertiary care center, to think that the most of the doctors must serve in the first line healthcare in rural communities is serving the needs of their societies and of their patients. And to have good role models for that career. If that is so, a career in underserved areas and in poorer countries may look more attractive than if you only look for this highly specialized position. Also, as I've said before, to tear down barriers to make education programs, trainings acceptable throughout the world so that you can use what you have received in another country and bring that recognition back to your own country. This is what standard setting and recognition and a global uh, perspective of these questions is all about. Also, to, to tackle this, this flow of healthcare personnel and this flow of doctors, it's important to think about what are the central roads and values of the doctor? What do we need doctors for? What is their task? What, what should be their prime commission? As we heard in the discussions about the future healthcare, future medical schools, we foresee substantial changes in how healthcare delivers and how the how the, the, the modern society will be built, and also some really challenging changes in what doctors will be doing in the future. Maybe very different from what we're doing today. And already we need to think about these things because that will allow flexibility concerning how healthcare system is delivered. And that will give opportunities to poorer areas to think about how should they use their resources, how should they use the competence they have in the system and think more about the competence of the system and thinking about the individual professional groups and how can we deliver the best possible health and promote health and cure diseases to the population that we serve. So this is, uh, this is pointing at thinking more about teamwork, a systems pers perspective on healthcare, working in teams together with other healthcare professionals, together with the patients the patients form part of the team. We use the experience and the competence of the patients to help them, to help themselves. Standard setting, again, thinking about 
how we should improve quality, and how we should meet the needs of patients and societies. Fourth of all, social accountability. And social accountability of the medical school is one of the prime targets of the standards for quality development of the World Federation of Medical Education. We want to see, in looking at what's being done in the medical school, looking at how accreditation is performed, that account is taken to whether the school is socially accountable. What does that mean? It, it means, for instance, to avoid, to blindly do what has always been done. The medical school should not build its curriculum on tradition only. Because it has been like this forever, that does not mean it should continue to be like this. It should not build the medical program based on their own needs and desires, the needs of the university. No, they should base it on the needs of the patients, the society, the research that needs to be performed, and the global society. And that should form the curriculum, that should form the learning outcomes and the competences that we try to develop. Doctors must meet the needs of healthcare in the society in which they work. They must be able to think not only of the patient they have in front of them, or the patients in the home, they must also think about everyone in the community with this disease, or trying to assist other societal stakeholders to promote health in the best possible way, to be health coaches, as we also have talked about this morning. One small example is that they must always be able to examine the effect of cost of decisions in the individual patient on the total resources available. Think about the patients, of course, foremost, but also think about how they can use the resources in the best possible way. This means that medical schools should foster future doctors as members of society who understand the needs of healthcare in different societies and that are able to identify mechanisms for growth, development, health promotion, and improvement. And these are all issues that when we develop standards that will be used for quality development of accreditation, we want to see that the medical schools are thinking about these things, that they are striving in this direction, that they are trying to go this way. Then of course it's more or less difficult in difficult parts of the world. You may come a different long stretch on this path, but the ambition must be there, the strive must be there, the efforts must be there. The World Federation for Medical Education is the international organization for quality development of all phases of medical education worldwide to promote the highest standards in medical education. And we do this by our four main projects, the recognition of accreditation that has already been touched upon during these days, the World Directory of Medical Schools, the standards for quality development and a project that we call the global role and value of the doctor. Try to look at in an international perspective what are the true basic role and values of an international doctor. And in that latter project we have identified some areas that we think are of particular importance for the roles and values of future doctors. And again, Standards, development, accreditation processes must address these things to see whether the school has involved in the way to try to develop in this direction to truly educate the doctors that will meet the needs of tomorrow and not through specifications of what was valid yesterday or today. All aspects of professionalism, being a professional doctor, is clearly the focus everywhere in the world. And this is a core, these are core competences. The doctor is communicator, educator, researcher, and this should be developed all the time. I would like to see inspired to say, inspired by what I've heard today and learned today, that I would consider to add to be a health promoter, to be a health coach. We have to take into account the demographic changes I touched upon. The doctor as a manager of healthcare within society and as a community health leader working together with other stakeholders to try to promote the best possible health in that country or region. Again, not only being restricted to the individual patients that happen to me or the short encounter with the patient, rather try to 
develop healthy society as much as possible and think about the long-term management of your patient with a chronic disease. The social accountability of medicine and the doctor was once again identified. Leadership and membership within the healthcare team and involving the patient in this healthcare team. So, we can use the WFME standard for international accreditation for quality development. Why is it important with international accreditation? Or rather, I would express, why is it important to recognize the high quality accreditation that's happening in countries or region? Well, mainly, again, it is to save our patients. Everything we do in quality development and accreditation is because we want to make sure that the patient will receive safe and best possible care of high standard. But also to facilitate international mobility, to promote transparency, because as I've said several times during this conference, transparent uh, accreditation must mean something. It cannot be just any process delivered by anyone. It must mean something, it must have a specific content, must be built in a specific way, there are some specific rules that survive. Apple Plus use local recognized and accessible standards. Very important is to note that accreditation must always support and stimulate innovation and curriculum development. I said that again, accreditation should not be conserving, should not make the institutions afraid of developing. That's why the standards used must be non-prescriptive, giving the direction, giving the, the main way, but not the details, not describe exactly how it's done. Because we want to stimulate diversity, we want to stimulate different ways of coming to the same goal, we want to stimulate innovation, research and development. So this is important, the presentation must always support and stimulate innovation and research and development. Our vision in this context is threefold, is to provide international recognized and accepted standards that can be used for these purposes, to provide internationally accepted methodology for the implementation process, describe a process that is agreed and accepted globally, and then embark on a project to recognize the accrediting organizations that are doing their job in such a way that it is accepted internationally, that we can put trust in what they're doing. As a foundation for accreditation and for quality development, we have developed since many years standards for basic medical education, postgraduate education, and continued professional development. They use the worldwide particular standards for basic medical education that have been translated into more than 25 languages globally. They have recently been revised, and the standards of postgraduate and CPD are under revision will be finalized during this year. And they are all available at our website, and I will give you the address of the website at the end. We are also during this conference, it has been really emphasized the importance of looking at the lifelong learning of physicians as a continuum, not as separate phases that are separated by, by big barriers and different institutions only involved in one part of this life of government. No, then it must be continued. And that was, that's why we have developed these standards for the three phases. That's why they are built in the same principal way. And we also need to think very carefully when we are talking about quality. What is the responsibility and possibility of undergraduate education? What can, how can undergraduate education contribute to a long time as a professional where we don't know too much about the expectations of confidence in 20 or 30 years when the ones that we educate today will be peaking in their careers. So we have to prepare them in the best possible way. And again, of course, that means we cannot go into just messing the details. We must think about the competences, the values, the basic ability to solve problems and to understand principles and mechanisms that have longer duration. And then uh, the postgraduate training has its responsibility and the continued professional development, which is the most important phase, but unfortunately the phase that we've spent too little time and interest in. They can provide the up-to-date 
knowledge and skills and attitude that the doctor needs for the performance of today. To stimulate the, the objectives of these uh, standards of TRIPO, to stimulate authorities, organizations and medical education institutions to plan for reforms and quality improvement, to establish national and international evaluation and recognition of medical educational institutions and programs, and again, to safeguard practice in medicine under conditions of increasing internationalization. So I, I hope you see now what is our aim and our ambition to work in this area and provide the tools that we do. The standards of built, that, that was uh, the basic idea when uh, the president before me, uh, Dr. Hans Karl, started to work with these. That was to build them with two levels of attainment. Basic standards of minimum requirements must. That means that these four, the basic demands of a medical school, whether it's situated in that continent or that continent or here or there, that this must be fulfilled. Otherwise, you cannot get the accreditation as a medical school. But more importantly, there are also standards for quality development, and these are standards that we should be aiming for. When we try to develop or think about developing and changing, we can have guidance from these development standards to see in what direction should we go, where should we put our energy, what should be in focus. I would like to stress very carefully that these are not absolute. These must standards must always go through a process of local adaptation. They must also always be put in a local context. Different parts of the world have different needs, have different abilities, have been able to develop at different levels, and they must be, have the possibility of changing the standards based on the best they can achieve. That may mean that some of the basic standards might not be possible, or might possibly not even be relevant for some countries. And then they have the possibility to declare them. While in other countries, some of the standards for quality development have already been achieved. So they choose to transfer that to a basic standard. And this is the process that we highly encourage and we think is very useful and also necessary for the standards to be accepted. Again, it's not a question of having an international standard telling you exactly what you must do. Now it's an effort to try to harmonize, to try to agree upon what is quality, what means quality, what constitutes quality, in what direction should we work. At the same time, to be a medical school, to be trusted internationally, to de deliver diplomas or certificates that will be trusted globally, you must meet the basic demands. Otherwise, you cannot be the business. So these standards then again can be used as a framework for voluntary self-evaluation. This is a very important point. All quality development must start from self-evaluation. You must think yourself, what are our strong sides, where are our weaknesses, where are our possibilities, what, what is threatening us, threatening us in our development. And then you need something to base that discussion. It can be used for external evaluation and counseling, peer review committees, including site visits, and they are used very much for those purposes. And they can be used for recognition and accreditation of institutions and programs by legal, regional, national and When we look at an accreditation process to see if we can recognize and give it a global status, there are some elements that we pay particular attention to. And I listed some of those elements here. First of all, the accredited organization must have an authoritative mandate. That decision must mean something. They must be independent to make a decision. Otherwise, if they do it and nothing happens and there are no consequences, it's not a very strong process. They must be independent from governments and providers in their decision making. But of course they can be supported by governments and they can be initiated by governments, but they must be independent in their decision. They must be trustworthy and recognized by different stakeholders. If they are not agreed, if they are not accepted as a legal organization, they have no possibility to work. 
they must use a transparent process, they must use predefined discipline specific criteria. You can't embark on an accreditation process and invent the criteria during the process. The criteria and the standards used must be known to everyone beforehand so everyone knows what can be expected. We definitely think that use of external experts is necessary. We definitely think that the self-evaluation process is, is necessary in to really build the development from below or from, uh, yes, from, from below. And site visits are, are necessary component to really give you a picture of what is going on. Experienced evaluators who have, been, have experience from doing this many times, they get a lot of information by visiting the site, talking to teachers, talking to leaders, talking to the students, see the facility, watch what's actually, actually happened to see if the documents that have been provided through the self-evaluation really reflect reality or whether they sometimes might be if not fake, so more of a dream than reality. There has to be an authority decision and the decision must be made public. The report, on the other hand, is the property of the medical school. And the medical school itself must make a decision whether they should make that publish or not. Uh, make it public or not. But the decision must be public. So our role in this is to cooperate with regional members and accrediting agencies to start the process of global recognition of accreditors. And we are quite successful in that. We have done several large countries and regions already, and there's a lot of interest, and we receive a lot of questions. And we think that this activity will be of, with increase, increasing frequency uh, over the next few years. What do we hope to be the impact of global medical education? Well, one is that international accreditation standards should be declared for all medical schools in the world. Any medical school, wherever it is, it must be able, possible for anyone, students, faculty, patients, or whatever, to find information whether that school is accredited. And if it's accredited, by who? And I will come back to how we try to achieve that. We also hope and think that the impact will be with emphasis on quality development. It's quality development that's important. It's not primarily the effort to try to identify the schools that are underperformed to sort of get them out of business. It's of course important to not accept schools that are underperformed, but the most important part is to try to elevate the quality of all medical schools and of all medical education. So that is why we focus on the stimulation of the self-evaluation process and the emphasis on quality development. We think it's a way to promote international cooperation. We think it's a way to facilitate brain circulation, that it would be easier for doctors and students to move from one area to another, to learn, to complement their education, and then to get back to their home countries with that new knowledge and that new experience and practice in their home countries. It will pro provide trust in accredited medical education institutions. That's also very important. And we have had you these days this discussion of what does accreditation mean in relation to the individual student. And of course, we need both. What the accreditation process can, can do is that it can state and declare that if a student comes from an accredited school that's been accredited through an international recognized process, we can put trust in that diploma, it means something. But of course, the variation between students is huge. Motivation always is the most important thing. And of course, you can have students or doctors graduated from accredited schools that still are not high quality. And you can of course have students and doctors coming from schools that are not of such high standards that still will be persons of high standards. But this is what the presentation is. The World Directory of Medical Schools is a complement to accreditation. Because accreditation is costly and it's resource demanding. You can't do accreditation every year. There must be some intervals. And usually these intervals 
comparing between four, five, six, seven years. If they would go up to ten years, you could question whether the school, whether you can really trust that the school maintains confidence for such a long time. So sometimes around five minutes, I think, would be very five uh, years. I think would be uh, reasonable. The work directory was launched in April 2014. It's a web-based, validated database that's useful for students, faculty, society, stakeholders, and patients. It provides relevant information about the international medical schools, including information about their accreditation. It's a shared effort between WFME and its previous Avicenna directory and the Baylor Institute of the United States with its pre previous IDA directory. And the ambition is to cover all medical schools in the world over the next two to three years. The way forward is for interested regional or bigger national accrediting agencies to contact the World Federation. Maybe in the future we should try to extend this process to postgraduate education and CPD, where the needs are just as big, or maybe probably even bigger, but where it is for many reasons much more complicated. And I urge you, and I would encourage you, to see to that all your schools are included in the World Directory for Medical Students, all the medical schools. You can find all information about everything I've said. You can find all the information about recognition and about the World Directory and how you can enter your schools if you visit our website at this address. And I thank you for your attention.